would you like to join me for a doll unboxing? Now, it's not Barbie, despite what my t-shirt says. It's actually a Blythe doll and it's an authentic Blythe. And it's my first authentic Blythe. Now, I definitely need to do an updated Blythe doll video because so much has happened since my last one. I know so much more about them. But now I have my first ever authentic one. I've not taken it out of the box. Now, I have done myself a cuppa. I do feel rather dry. So, yeah, may, you know, do feel free to go and make yourself a cuppa and come back to me. Now, pause the video. And I must admit, hopefully I can speak to you okay. I had a really hot pizza yesterday and uh, I burnt my mouth and I didn't learn. I kept on eating more of it. And, uh, yeah, I'm really suffering today. <laughs> So hopefully I can get through this video without too much pain. <laughs> I should have a photo with this, shouldn't I? <laughs> right, I stopped the video so I could have some photographs taken with the box because obviously once I open it, then that's it. No more photographs of her in the box. So I've got some scissors ready. Now, what shall I say about this doll before I open her? She's a collaboration between Blythe and a Korean clothing band, band brand called Fighting Milk. Now, actually, I um was looking. No, the brand is called Milk. Sorry, this is called Fighting Milk. So, I can't pronounce this word. <laughs> Sa Sarang. I'm not quite sure. I'll put it up on the screen just in case you can't see it. But basically, um, the brand, I get to look in at the clothing brand Korean called Fighting Milk. But I've, what it is, it's called Milk Nut Fighting Milk. I think it's just another thing, meaning like verses. Do you know, like if you do like a Barbie collaboration with a brand and it would say Barbie verses or collab it's just i think that's what it means by fighting so i had a look up the brand uh milk in in korean in korea and i found it and then i had a bit of digging around and i found the clothes that are inspired uh, you know the inspiration for the clothes for this doll which I'll put them up on the, I'll put a collage up on the screen that I made and I have shared this on social media and uh, but then maybe I'll pop some of those photographs up on the screen as I'm taking things out of this box and showing you one here. Maybe I'll do some photo comparisons and things for Instagram and things. So I obviously don't know how easy this is going to be to open. Now I don't want to rip the box um, I don't know, I will be keeping this box. I know that if you were so, um, a serious collector, it might be impossible to keep the boxes, but this is my only one. So obviously it'd be silly to get rid of the box, wouldn't I? So I'm going to try and go along the um, sellotape without damaging the box which I've managed to do. Now one hiccup I did have is the plastic that was covering this. As I was pulling it off this sellotape stuck to the box here. I did manage to peel it off without any damage luckily. So now I've done that, that it has slipped out the back. Actually I feel fluff on my face. <laughs> Oh, actually, I was going to make an outfit to wear to the Barbie movie, but um, my husband and I saw a top in TK Maxx that is really Barbie looking. You know, not it doesn't say Barbie, but it just looks like the Barbie movie inspired. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to wear that to the movie. So, oh, now, I've told you about this in my, um, my Bly video, that in the box, you get this bit that's perforated that you pop out and you put on your Blythe stand and it matches the box and I suppose that's what that is showing you on there. Actually, do you like my t-shirt? It's actually a pyjama top 
and it came with some shorts and my parents um, bought it for me from Primark. So yeah, but I've been wearing it as a t-shirt because I think, well, it's nice enough to wear as a t-shirt. Right, let's have a look. Oh, so I'm gonna be carefully slide her out. Now there might be bits of this video I cut out that are a bit boring. So if it goes a bit weird here and there, you'll know why. It doesn't want to come out. So excited, she's gorgeous. I can't wait to get my hands on her. However, I do feel a tad disappointed because I've been listening to a podcast called Do La Dolly Dispatch. It's on, uh, it's, it's a proper podcast. I know some people call these YouTube videos podcasts. But a podcast originally is like an audio file, you know, like a proper, something you listen to. And it's called Low Dolly Dispatch and they are serious live collectors on it. And they get people on it. Hang on, let me get this out. I'll take you that in a bit. Oh, it's coming out. Something went click like it was stuck. Ah, so there we go. I'll try I might put that inside the box that it was delivered in to try and keep it nice but I, I need to pop that out first but as I was saying Le Dolly Dispatch now they made me feel like I wasn't a real blithe person isn't she gorgeous yeah basically I felt like I was not a real blithe person because I didn't own an authentic doll and uh sorry I've got fluff on my face and uh, yeah i just felt like i needed one and luckily like this is a current doll um you know anyone could buy her now she's actually the cheapest one that's on sale at the moment um, from the you know brand new you know like a new one that's you know like a current one that hasn't been discontinued if you know what i'm saying this is from the julie moon shop and actually I didn't get charged any custom fees when it arrived, like I've heard everybody else say. And I don't think I paid any more than anybody else um, when I paid. So yeah, I don't know what happened there. Now I must admit, I was getting an email saying that I'd got something that I needed to sort out. but I, And it was saying it was from Ips, which I think is a scam. So I just, just ignored it and I thought, I don't think it's this. But this was a different company anyway. I did check with somebody who do does it arrive with when it gets in the UK. And I checked with her and she said that one. And so I knew who to expect it off if I got a, um, a message. But I didn't get a message about I had to pay any customs or anything. Which is really nice. Now, what I loved about this girl, she's got something really like modern and trendy that you know is really like current that you could wear you know current day wear um which i've got a really mixed taste i really like old you know victorian medieval you name it i love every era 60s i love every single era i am a dressmaker and i am passionate about fashion throughout the ages i you know I love it all basically uh, but you know it's nice to have a trendy looking modern day doll now what uh, another thing that appeals to me is um this dress this red gingham is what I used to wear in my primary school I wore gingham red summer dresses I was a little blonde girl with a fringe well Americans you call it bangs don't you I think us uh, Brits and Australians we call it a fringe and <laughs> so yeah so it's like a little me actually um my mum will probably watch this video and mum don't you agree this is a little Claire now my mum has given me one of my um school dresses I can't actually find where I've put it because she thought I could use it for fabric which yes I definitely go to. I was actually going to make something for one of my 18 inch dolls um, with it but I could probably make more but I don't know where it is at the moment because I'm between two craft rooms at the moment but, well 
between two rooms because I'm having my craft room renovated. I'm still in my craft room sewing and things and using it. But the majority of my things are in another room and I don't know where I've put everything. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so this is quite sentimental to me really. Now what I was about to say to you, what I was a little bit disappointed about when I was listening to um, La Dolly Dispatch recently. I haven't listened to all of them yet. They're quite new to me. And um, sorry, I keep doing this. I've got fluff. And uh, they were talking to somebody who was saying they're not that keen on the new bodies. And uh, yeah, and I felt a little bit gutted that they were a bit down about it, about the doll I was waiting for. Now, I haven't got anything to compare to apart from a body that I bought on eBay and a head that was sold to me as an authentic Blythe. It's got like 2006 on it. It could be still a fake, you know, pretending to be real, I don't know. And my, one of the leg doesn't bend properly and stuff. Maybe that's why they were selling it. I don't know. And uh, yeah, and all mine are fakes. So I haven't got like an older Blythe. Now the Blythes, they've changed throughout the ages. You've got your Kenner Blythes that came out in 1972 that only ran for a year. And then they came back in the early 2000s and they keep changing it'd been the same i think mainly the same company making them but now it's a new company making them but yeah they've changed the face molds every now and then and they've they label them like sbl ebl rbl something like that and they all stand for something if you look it up but um i think these are called mod oh gosh i'll put it up on the screen i forgot what this is called is it renaissance i don't i don't know <laughs> but this is this is a whole new one now but this is actually you know authentic from the junior moon shop but yes yeah, isn't she gorgeous so yeah i can't wait to get her out i need a sip of coffee because i'm getting dry now i wanted to match what i was opening here and i wasn't sure what to wear because i thought well the box is pink isn't it so yeah I've got a bit of pink on, but inside we're red and blue, aren't we? Red, white and blue. Very um, Great Britain and America. Or I think Australian. Do you have the same colours? But I've got the red mug, so, you know. <laughs> so I've got the red element. Right, that's all the coffee gone now. So if I have a, a fit, I've got nothing to, uh, to help me. So yeah, I'm going to start cutting things on the back of here now and I'm not going to bore you with it and I'll save you for the exciting bit. <sighs> right, I'm back. Now, I've had a look at the collage that I made. I'll, obviously, I can put this up on the screen for you to see so I can compare the, the items. So yeah, I can compare the items with you. So the first thing I've got out is a part of the doll stand. Now, I have got doll stands like this, but again, they're fake. So it'd be good to have something to compare to, you know, the difference in quality and things. Or see if there's any difference in there, how they look. Which I'll show you that in a later video. I'll just show you this doll today. I've just realised the bottom of it is attached to the side and I haven't loosened that either. So here is the base. Now this is where we'll put that insert and it's got the official Blive logo embossed on it, which is amazing. Pop that in like that. I wish I had something high enough. To, I need to do the Claire on the stairs, don't I? <laughs> I didn't think that brown background though in that hallway would look very nice for this video. So yeah, I didn't want to film down there. Um, there's not too many people in my house actually at the moment. It is a Tuesday evening and it's five to nine. And three of my family members are at the gym. Actually, my husband's getting recorded at the gym. They're filming him um, for some tennis, something or other, with his friend. So we have a hat. Now I'm having a look at my picture. I can't see a brimmed hat on here, but I'm sure on the um, milk website, I had got a model wearing a white brimmed hat. And it's got fighting milk 
our niece and a red bow for attaching at the back. We've got a little jacket which on the picture it does appear to look like a denim jacket. It's actually got a diagonal weave on it and it's more of a purpley, a purpley sort of colour isn't it? Like lilac would you say? Lilac? it's really nice and it's got buttons on the pockets four buttons there in the front but the i'll have a look what they have it opens it looks really nicely made actually it's pulling a little bit under the arm on here but nothing too severe very sturdy plastic um prestards we call them here and it's got a facing it's not fully lined but it has got a facing it does look like it might fray inside but I could put a little bit of um fray check on there couldn't I if I, if I was a little bit worried about it but yeah it's really beautiful I'm not I'm not like criticizing it or anything I think it's lovely I'm hoping that's not my husband <laughs> I thought I've got loads of time I've just heard the the ring doorbell now this doll comes with hello now the girls in the pictures they wear bows but they're not made of hair you could get some hair pieces couldn't you and make one now here some tiny little red socks oh actually the jacket i forgot to mention there's definitely a girl in the picture wearing a jacket of similar sorts it's not like purple kind of color is it but you're yeah, definitely wearing that style of jacket and there's definitely a girl uh wearing i'll put it on the screen wearing a red skirt very much like this and this has got velcro on it now this, I'd love to make one of these actually for myself. It's a little sweater top. It's white jersey fabric and it's got a red binded neck and um, a red hemband. It's Velcro at the back. I love this val this sort of Velcro. I wonder where you can buy it from. I've wondered for my own dressmaking, doll making things. Now there's a girl wearing a t-shirt saying milk on it so i'll put it on the screen and this says fighting milk she's got a pair of little sneakers or trainers or whatever you like to call them they're like rubbery they're not hard plastic they're like rubbery kind of plastic a bit like hmm, does barbie barbies can be a bit like this actually I don't know if Barbie's shoes fit Blythe or fake Blythe's actually. Now I can't see any of the girl's shoes in those photos so I cannot go there. Now, ooh, here are some earrings. Now this is the first doll I've had with earrings because all the fakes have pierced ears but they don't have earrings. And they're little tiny hearts. I might have to put some photos up of these. And, and they on the picture they've got a girl with a bag with a heart so that's where it, it kind of matches now all that's left to get out now is the doll i'll come back right i nipped away for a moment but i'm back yeah i had a couple with my husband he's finishing off and he's going to jump in the shower i've bought annabella up with me now annabella i will get my doll out in a moment annabella is a doll that i built from bits I bought a body that was sold to me as an authentic body because I wanted to compare it for dressmaking purposes and then it happened to come with a head plate but when I bought a fake damaged doll um, off eBay I basically took her eye mechanism out, put it in this doll and, and put the scalp on. So I put the scalp on off the fake doll and the eye mechanism as i say and i'm using the body and the head and yeah and this is annabelle now what it is she looks like my other fate doll my um isabella and uh, so i was i was calling her like although she's not authentic authentic annie 
because it was sounded a bit funny and then i just extended it to anna annabella so because uh, she's got the same hair as isabella it makes it easier i thought to understand isabella annabella <laughs> but there you go but yeah i thought i'd bring her up so we can kind of do a bit of a comparison and i have put a uh, a neck an articulated neck joint in here i haven't made any modification to her eye chips or um, I haven't done any like greys gaze uh, correction or eye boggling or anything like that. I've done no other modding on on it anyway on this doll. She's lovely, isn't she? So uh, and she's very tanned compared to this girl here. <laughs> right, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll show you what I've got so far. I think she's ready to come out now. But I suppose the more of these you buy, the more experience you get. Maybe I need to buy more of them. <laughs> oh, there we go. Ta da! No damage. I can pat myself on the back. Her hair is all in twists. I don't know how to take this off without. I don't want to pull it up and mess a fringe up. Plastic it off. I'll try it and. I'll do this with the fakes. I slide it down. I slid it down and then I cut the plastic. That's around her neck. She's got plastic on her body as well. Oh, oh she's so pretty. Oh, I'm so excited. I, I want to show you, but I want to look at her as well. So, should we get the plastic off her body first before we take her hair down? Now, this dress has got Velcro on the back. Oh, she's got pants. Now, I think I'm going to have to remove her pants or undergarments or knickers, whatever you call them, be, um, to get this plastic off. I've just put her next to authentic Annabelle, or not so authentic, and they do look very similar. Their noses look the same. Their, like, their makeup's different, obviously, their colouring, but yeah, they do look quite similar, really. I know it's very hard to tell because obviously she's so pale, but yeah, the shape of the face. I don't know if she, her face may be a bit rounder, but I don't know if it, or a chin. I think um yeah, they look pretty similar actually and their bodies their bodies feel similar as well so i'll never know if that was authentic or not really will i but yeah she looks lovely so should we change her eye chips so those are blue but not a blue that i've ever had on one of the fakes right facing green you don't have to yank as hard front facing orange and left facing purple actually i'm sure she had purple when she was in the box but maybe i yanked it when i pulled it out front facing blue again oh wow okay so shall we put the other outfit on her there we go. You could have this tucked in or over the top, however you like it. Oh, she's gorgeous, isn't she? Socks. Shoes. Earrings. Wow. I've been really interested to see what their earrings look like. Authentic Blythes. See, these are nice because they look like studded earrings when they go in, even though they hook in. They hook in and then they look like studs. Ooh. Now you can put studded earrings in my other dolls. What I could do is I could take the heads apart, put studs in and then put the backs on inside the head. Couldn't I? Or if you didn't, if you wanted them to stay in, you could glue them in. But I don't want to do anything too permanent. Per permanent, that's it. <laughs> Not per permanent. Oh gosh, I <laughs> Rowan, are you watching this video? <laughs> oh, 
I, I always say these words wrong. Ruin helps me. So <laughs> it might look better maybe if I um I tucked it in. She looks a bit like, you know, sloppy, doesn't she? <laughs> With it out. Now this um, bow, I think bet it better it goes better pushing from back to front because you know, if you do it the other way, you're going to see a bit of plastic. <laughs> That's cute, isn't it? A little visor, and we've got our stand. I can't wait to do some photographing with this doll. She's absolutely gorgeous. I love having an authentic life. So, right, let's get these out. I want to hold her head. Now, I know people complain about doll hair. Let's get this cap off, actually. <laughs> Oh, she's got writing on the back. Blythe, 2022 Hasbro. Made in China. It feels sticky. That's what I'd say. Now, I must admit that I've heard people say they've had to give their dolls a day spa. Now, I haven't felt the need to do that to any of my fake. I am going to give her hair a wash. It, it's actually really knotted here, which is unfortunate. Yeah, but do you know what? It's nothing that I can't solve. I'll get her sorted out. So anyway, I will come back in this video uh, with some more footage. I'm not totally done with this yet. I'll see you in the next bit. Welcome back. It's the next day. Now I'm having trouble filming because of my broken um, filming light stand and things. So yeah, I've done some makeshift thing. But I've decided I'm going to wash her hair today. But I'm going to take her head apart because I don't really want to risk getting all water and things in the eye mechanism. So yeah, I'm going to basically see what she's like. So, see if she's like my fakes inside actually because yeah, I've never opened a real blind doll i didn't think i was going to be doing this so soon i might actually make some minor modifications while i'm in there as i'm opening up her head anyway but whatever i do i will let you know <laughs> head comes straight off. I didn't need to undo all the screws actually and so I can keep her like this and I can see what the body looks like in there. It does look a little bit different so yeah I don't have to totally take her apart but if I want to I can do so yeah I'm in a bit of a conundrum at the moment do I don't I but whatever I do I'm gonna get her hair sorted out now. Right, I'm going to remove this spring here. Right, I'm going to burn this so it's um, it's easier to thread. It's basically blind cord. Goes that way. I'm going to do my knot okay, from right to left, which I think is the opposite to what the it is down the bottom. I think I like to go the opposite way. I'm going to do a knot. I 
Obviously, if this ever comes undone, I can go back in there. But let me just cut the end off and unburn it just to melt it a little bit. And then I'm going to thread it through one of the squares like that. So basically, uh, see her eyes are closed now. So when I change her eyes, so I think I have to open them first, so they're open. Then I'll pull the other cord that's got the loop on it, the original one. And then her eyes will stay closed, open them. And then they change and then... Okay, so that's how she'll work, but when I change her eyes, she can actually sleep. I can have a sleepy girl, which is really lovely. But yeah, I can't wait to get her hair back on, but her hair's drying at the moment. And uh, yeah, I had to dip it. I, had to, I didn't basically similar what I do to my own hair, shampooed it twice. I didn't use fabric conditioner and like some. I used conditioner. I used a hair mask as well. Um, then there was a bit that was knotted, which still didn't look good, so I dipped it in boiling water, combed it out, and uh, yeah, I, actually I combed it when the conditioner was in as well, and then I dipped it all in hot, in the hot water, not exactly boiling because it had already cooled down a little bit, and yeah, I'm just I combed it into place a little bit, and I'm leaving it to dry on top of a mug in my conservatory. So yeah, we'll just obviously get our hair back on when we can, and I'm going to get these screws back in the. Bottom. I'm not going to make any um, modifications to her eye mechanism at this time. I think I'm just going to leave her as she is, just with the sleep eye. And maybe at a later date, I might decide to give her more, more things. Maybe neck articulation, maybe eye, eye gaze correction, things like that. But for now, yeah, this is all the modification I'm going to make to her. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing that and I'll see you in the next bit. Welcome back to the final part of this video. Now, following on from the last piece of video that I did for you, I basically, um, I washed her hair and uh, I let it dry. Well, actually, I put it back on her while it was still damp and then I, I finished the drying while it was on her. And I actually just put a couple of bobbles in her hair. Now, the problem I had with her hair is when I washed it, there was some knotted pieces. Now, they they perm, so I believe they perm their doll's hair so basically where the hair was knotted it has ruined the perm i don't know if you can see that on here but see that bit that looks a bit fuzzy that's where i had a big knot in it so i actually dipped that in boiling water and it did help smooth it out and then i ended up dipping her whole hair in the but well, not so boiling, it had boiling water that had cooled down in a jug. Um, I basically dipped the whole thing, so it has relaxed the curl a little bit. But obviously, this isn't great. However, this is at the back of her head. Say if I photograph her, you're only going to see the front. I don't think her hair looks like, I can't, I can't really criticise, I couldn't mind, but <laughs> I don't think her hair looks really like lovely. Um, but I could get rollers in it, I could get it damp again, get rollers in it. It does still feel like it's got like a residue in her hair, even though I've shampooed it twice, I conditioned it and things. Yeah, it, I can still feel that, you know, it feels like there's something on it. But yeah, I'm not obviously um, over the moon with her hair, but I'm not totally gutted either. And I do like tying hair up as well so i'll probably be doing a lot of hair ups and things on her and uh, she's got her earrings in which i think are really cool because they look like studded earrings the way they make them and uh, the only thing is i'm a bit worried about losing them obviously she's got nothing on her feet at the moment i've washed oh that's it i've washed um well i've soaked her red skirt and her red socks in a jug and uh the, i did it for hours and uh, the water did go a little bit pink so i'm thinking if i'd have left them on her body 
would they have made her a little bit pink so i'm glad i did that but um and i've dried them on a kitchen towel and the kitchen towel doesn't look pink so maybe it's okay now and regarding her eyes now you will laugh at me i said that i wasn't going to do anything but then i got so fed up while i was waiting for her hair to dry I just decided to give her, um, you know, a bit of an eye makeover. So rather than just a sleep eye, I have done a gaze alteration. Where how you do that is you have to file a, a little notch. Well, there's a few ways of doing it, but I file a little notch on the uh, the back of the eyelid, and I have to make the um, the T bar that you screw on to keep the eye mechanism on, and it kind of holds things in place. You have to take a little bit off that as well, but obviously it's a bit of a fine line. You can take too much off. If you take too much off, the eyes won't change with the cord. You could flick them with your finger, but um, but you know not enough. And then what you've done with the eyelids won't work. So yeah, I've done that to her. So if you look at her at the moment, I think. She was looking, was she slightly looking down before, wasn't she? Well, with the capability I've given her, she can look up into the corner. I'll just change her eyes. I haven't decorated her sleep eye cord yet. So she's just got her original. Uh, I've left it long, so I'll be able to tie a knot and things. So I'll just change her eyes. So when you give them the sleep eye, their eyes don't open when you change their eye. So you have to use the cord that you've installed. Because normally the spring would do this. Then you do that. Now, I said in my video her eyes are orange, these. On the description, they're actually pink. But I've got fakes with pink eyes and they don't look like that. And somebody said, oh, have you changed her eye mechanism? And I haven't. Uh, her eye chips. And I haven't. So I'm just point, I've am just pointed those up. They look like a brownie orange colour, don't they? And I can point them down as well. Let me pull the, uh, the sleep eye cord. Because the sleep eye cord wants to come down. Yes, she can kind of look down. Straight on normally looks a bit more starey. <laughs> So I'll just change them again. Hear that click? Her eyes are closed. Obviously, what I'm saying to you is if you don't give them sleep eyes, if you change the eyes, the eyes will just be the next colour. Her eyes won't be closed. But I like them. So here you can see she's looking up. That's because of what I've done. I can move her eye down. She can look down as much as that. And uh, let's do the next one. Look, it's nice being able to have them sleeping. <laughs> so that is that lovely blue colour. So she can look up with that. She can kind of look down with it as well. So yeah, she's really, really lovely, isn't she? It's a really lovely doll. I'm so happy to have her. I've been having so much fun with her, actually. It's been a few days, actually, since I did my unboxing video. And, uh, yeah, I've made uh, her a dress with that stripy fabric that's from a discarded um, raincoat lining I have. But I went to Alton Towers, a theme park, and the red outer was starting to decompose i'd had it many years my boys were small when i had it and my husband said i was getting red bits on my face while i was at the theme park so when i got home i cut it up i saved all the line and i've actually saved a lot of the outer as well but all the bits that were good obviously the bit that had started to rot i reckon something had got on it and it had made it decompose because the other bits look okay so yeah maybe i'll make a little uh barbie raincoat live raincoat or something with it a replica of mine that would be funny wouldn't it I mean, actually it's barbie day today the barbie movie the official release is today so my husband is actually booking tickets while he's out and about today so and we're taking my sewing machine when he gets back we're taking my sewing machine um to i've got a, more than one machine to be repaired so uh hopefully they won't have it too long and i'll get it back so but i can sew without it so uh um, what else i've been so i made her a little outfit a hat and I made her some leg warmers but I've not photographed the leg warmers so I did photograph her in the dress and the hat and I photographed her 
with a doll that I've been transforming into a young Wednesday Adams, you know, the, the modern Wednesday from the Netflix series. And uh, it, unless you've been following me on um, social media, you wouldn't really know that I've been doing this. And I, and, I re, and I made an Alice doll as well, which I will do a video about those. But yeah, I just haven't got round to it yet. And what else? So yeah, something that oh, I've made some aprons using a uh, pattern from uh, Moshi Moshi. And uh, yeah, and basically I did some free motion embroidery on the pockets saying garden. So I did a garden apron and a fruit picking apron and a photograph craft um this little i've been calling a little miss because i have everybody calls these real blives often by their official names so for now i've just been saying little miss little miss fighting milk at sarange however you say it so little miss for short and uh yes yeah, so i took a photograph of her with bonnie wearing their little aprons yesterday i made those the night before yeah and that's what i've been getting up to so far so i will be posting way more photographs of her on my social media so i hope if you follow me i hope you've enjoyed watching them i hope you've enjoyed this video i've really enjoyed sharing this journey with you and uh, she's my first authentic blive she's a good small company blive not takara because obviously they're, they're still hasbro but the good small company make them now and i'm sure she won't be my last but at the moment she's my only one and i'm very happy but i'm still really enjoying my fakes as well i know that um some people frown upon them and i can totally understand but if you can understand the joy these fake dolls have bought me uh, you know you wouldn't begrudge me of that happiness i'm sure so so anyway thank you so much for joining me for this episode of my doll diaries my uh, official blive doll unboxing and i'll see you in my next video bye